So in this video, we'll learn about how to write a model plugin with which we'll be pushing a model by giving it as it a velocity. Okay, so I have created a new ROS package named model plugin. Basically, I'm going to open this model my Visual Studio code. I've already kept it open. Now this is the script. Okay, this is the plugin script. But before that, it's important to know where we have placed it. So now you see it is placed within the model okay scope within the model scope and it is in the world script okay in this video I am also going to talk about the things how where to place this plugin correctly okay so this is going to matter a lot now this model is here now we have placed our plugin over here now you see there is one more thing that's coming with from this video is that I have placed a element that's name is model well so we'll learn about how this element is going to use okay and let's go the code then and cmake is basically the same is completely the same that we have done before okay this is the same nothing more changed over here we'll see all the cmakes are same another important thing so over here is let's start discussing the code so you already know all the things like what we need to include the header files this gazebo you know already common you know physics you know the one that we have have extra added over here is vector 3 and we'll understand why i've added it just a minute now see this is the same within the namespace gazebo model plugin i've already explained you all those things i'm just made my own class which i have inherited publicly the model plugin okay now the load load is there load gets with all the plugins so load is there now the same thing physics model pointer model and element model pointer hdf but now here the difference is that now we are going to use both of them this pointer as well and hdf as well before that you see this so what changes i have done from this is that i have followed the good approach that i have told you in last video that will make the data member rather than making the local variable so i made a data member of most of the things like model pointer as model count as count and this event will talk about this so what i've done in this step is just i've accessed that model data member and stored the model so that i can use it not just within this load function rather after this as well okay so now this is not a local variable now this is the same thing this this model dot is same exactly that we did the last time so this is the model now the interesting thing that's going to come over here is that now come over here what is going to happen now this model scope last time we were just trying to access the name now we are also using the hdf to point to this model velocity this model velocity okay so we are using this hdf pointer as well let me show you I made a good diagram on this so this is the model pointer that's pointing to the name of this obviously when I talk about pointing to anything I mean that it can use anything but you have to have a function right like model has this model get name function that we already discussed now this hdf also has some functions like this hdf that we are having within our function this hdf that is there this can use to point so many things now this is one of the example where we are pointing to our model velocity and element that I have created within this okay so how to point to this we are using hdf get and then the input like this okay in a minute we'll discuss the detailing of this so now you understood the important place important of this you have to place the things in a right plugins on a right scope so it's a model plugin so it should be within the model the world plugin so it should be within the world plugin otherwise the naming namespace thing will create so much of issue and your code won't work okay now let's come back to over here so this is a well that we are going to basically use this for applying the velocity so this this well gets a default value so that if in case we are not able to get the value from if this this is not defined if you do not get the value from here we'll directly use the default value like 
like you might have seen in some of the Gazebo plugins, they have defined the default values. So this is how they have defined it. Now the other thing is HDF also got some functionalities like as element get. So these are two very common you will see in HDF. Let me again go back on my site. I'm directly going to open from here. I already kept it open HDF element. So I've already kept it open and I've searched has element as well. So you can see this element. So when you ever see any functions, always see this input parameter. So it takes the name string. So that's why we are giving it a string, right? We are giving it a string. And what it gets as the output is the boolean. So it will return is it true or false. So basically what it's doing is checking if the element exists or not. Because HDF is pointing to this. Okay. Now it's just checking is this has some value or not. Is this exist or not. If this exists then we'll get it value. So you can see over here it is referred by get as well. We go inside get and you will see this get. So whenever you see always see the function name so this get is there it is having input parameter now the return type as well as see there is a template defined over here so that's why we have written a template so here it will just be taking the local local values like right now i know what i'm going to use this for so i know it will be a double value or a float you can say this that's why this pointer is take that's why this template is taking double in it okay now it has taken double now also see the return type of it hdf element get so it will return us the value that we want whatever it is it will return the template to us right so we have asked it for double so this will this well should also be a double so that's why i've written double over here now we got the value from it and I'm just printing it out over here. After this is clear, now the important things comes over here that we are going to discuss from here. Last time we discussed the transport that is used for publishing on the message. Now we are going to discuss something called update events. Okay, so any simulator that you see, it's going to have the start or end something that changes. Okay, so when a simulator start, that's called start up event. When it ends that's called end event something like this so event means what is going on so event gazebo has that kind of event and where we'll find this event now this is the question so you will find this event over here when you go on gazebo api the left hand side thing things you see those are very important like last time when we are checking for transport we went inside the transport now we are checking for the events will go inside the events now within this event we want an event slash to get notification for our simulation event so you will see the event is referring to this namespace events so what we have to open we have to open this events right so when we go inside this events now you can see a variety of connection over here connect create connect entity create connect entity so there are different of kinds of them and what we are searching for we are searching for this so just copy this find now we got this so this is also basically working like a subscriber so it will have a callback function and you see the template is there okay so and it is returning a constant pointer of update connection and it is of event constant pointer connection pointer okay so it is returning a connection pointer and i have given it a return type and returning this connect connect world plugin begins now the important thing over comes over here uh, are this going to subscribe so what we are going to do over here for this to subscribe there is something called bind so i have told you in one of in the starting video to learn about boost okay so that has got bind over here but what we are going using over here is a standard bind and if you see this is passing the reference so this is something equivalent to this this on update means this is a callback function it will help us to call this on update member function okay but the thing over here is it is using a standard bind if you want to learn more about bind 
then you can go over here and use this to open this and run learn about the bind but i want to explain to you in a very short what basically bind is doing over here it is going to combine this this and on update together as well as when you use bind then you do not need to give the input parameter so you see is there any input parameter even if it has then we do not need to give it because we are using bind state of that it will be replaced with the placeholder placeholder means it will just keep a blank space a dash like this okay so if you want to read more detail about then go on the link and read about it the important thing comes over here so as, as like subscriber keeps on updating itself so this on update is also going to keep on updating every simulation alters means every time simulation is changed simulation time is running it altering then this on update is going to be running at that time okay so i hope up to this is clear so all this build up was there so that we can use the events which will keep on updating every time and we'll use the use that event to move our object okay so now what i have done is i have defined a count so that count keeps on increasing till the count is less than 1000 what we'll do will set the model will set it to a linear velocity set to a linear velocity now which method i am using i am directly using the model method i am not publishing on it but somehow internal this will be doing but this has made my work so easy now i do not need to publish on write a publisher and all those things directly use this function right so where we'll get this function definition same thing i've already explained to you how to get those for now i'm directly going to open that so if you know properly then this model basically what it is defined within the physics models and if you check over here it is defined within the gazebo physics models okay and if you go down you will get this set linear velocity set angular velocity so there are many like that okay but we are right now we just need the set linear velocity and from here you can see it's taking the ignition math vector 3d okay so that's why we need the vector 3d now clear that's why we included this ignition math vector 3d because we'll need over here now this vector 3d you might be knowing this already where it is defined ignition math is there and also i have told you how to search that directly google ignition math vector 3 it is defined within this when you can directly come from opening this link i have just kept it open okay now this is that vector 3d and this is taking x y and z it will take x y z and i want to apply the velocity to the z axis means it will move up our model will move up and which well we are using the one we got from the model well this element within this so it will be applying 0 0.2 meter per second okay velocity to this model which model the model that it's attached to it which model I attach this box is attached right now right and it this count is keep on increase i hope entire code is clear to you if you felt that something you do not know then please do watch the previous video because i have explained them in much more details right now we are just few things were there like the new one would be this event was new and this hdf how to use the hdf was new just these two things was new and this model and all are already know how to get them right this model is registered now let's i've already built it i've already built it I'm, I'm just going to use it okay and it is there within this model.launch file so i'm just launching it for this i'm again going to go back to website open this we are going to launch this just copying this paste it over here now you see this output now see till this alter is less than 1000 because increasing now so we have also defined something like this till it was 1000 it was moving up now 1000 cross it just went down so this is the logic and i know you already understood the logic very well that's why i always say for gazebo plugin that logic building is not difficult it's difficult to get how to use this function where from where we'll get this function how to get the input parameter which class to use which files to include 
this is done and you know this model we are getting and model velocity we got using this 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 velocity so it got from this model from here right with the hdf pointer the code is over but i want to discuss one more thing with you if you suppose you have a custom models like you download the mesh files and all and then how, how you define it you define it within a model and in the package you just export it then how to use this model plugin over there so this is a question right now what i was doing over here is i just made a new model over here and i just used it but if something like this is there when you are using a custom model you will just include it then what to do where to put your uh, um, plugin file this is also very important so in that case you have to put within the hdf definition your model like cylinder is a model i have made a cylinder model very simple model but you can have the mesh file over here and it is having model.hdf so within that model.hdf i put my plugin so you have to always remember whether you are using a custom model or you are using putting everything within the world your plugin model plugin must be under this model scope okay, otherwise your code won't work it may also give errors as well so this model plugin is within the model scope see of model.hdf defined within the cylinder okay so i placed it inside over here and what i've done in the custom model world i've just included the like we include normally okay so this is a big difference so i will now play that and show you the cylinder will also move okay make this concept clear because i also get stuck one time let me just paste the code and it's going to start you see this cylinder is there so it cylinder will be moving up you see, see this cylinder is moving up till is this alteration reaches thousand okay you will see the cylinder is moving up because we applied the force in z direction 0 0.2 or something like that how much we applied within this hdf it was 0 0.4 okay so this is how you have to define the things now i hope every concept is very very clear to you now you can see this name is cylinder because this is cylinder over here and this value got changed because it is pointing to this over here so this is how the pointer can do anything but even if you change the name even you change the value so this is the importance of this pointers over here so that's it in this video